Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. I wish to continue the channel from Alcazar. I wish to, to talk to you about the real communications that you get, not what you think, not what you believe you can do, but how it really truly works. Let's be practical. Cryon, I got a message. I know what I'm supposed to do. But I don't know how or where or when. What should it be? And the answer is always this. Don't turn to a book. Don't go to the intellectual then to figure it out. I'm going to give you more on that in just a moment and some examples. The intuition is the smart communicator. It comes from that part of the cells which is hooked to the pineal. That part of the cells which is God, if you wish to say that. For inside you is a conduit right to that multidimensional place that is so I would say not understood. Humans, you're not going to get linear answers, even if you ask linear questions. There is so much complexity on the other side of the veil that wants to deliver things to you in a way that you can understand. But so often you stop that by the biases you have. Spirit, when should I do it? And you have a picture of a calendar. Point to the date when I should begin. When is this going to happen? When is the situation going to clear? When is it going to start? And every single human is expecting then to get that answer. What if I told you spirit doesn't know? And you would say, wait a minute, God knows everything. Dear ones, I have news, and it goes like this. You have free will. So the timing of things comes from you, those around you, and what happens in general in your society, on your planet, and even your growth. You may have a very strong signal of what you're supposed to be doing, but you'll never get a when. Now, some of you will have a feeling of immediacy. Can I share with you something? It's not always from spirit. The immediacy, again, comes from your consciousness having to do things quickly when you get instructions. I'll say it again. When your father tells you to clean up your room, when is it that you're supposed to clean your room? This is ingrained in you, all the way from your parents to your teachers to those in charge of you at work. They come and say, this is what I want, and you give it to them. When spirit starts to speak to you in these gentle ways, here is what the purpose of your life is, here is what you're going to feel you're going to do, there is a knee-jerk reaction to say, I'm doing it now. And that is not necessarily always correct. The message that I give today, that Alcazar gives today, is that the smart body is the one. The one that's in touch with spirit is the one that's going to give you the timing. And that's going to come through intuition. Intuition is not a brain process. It's a heart pineal process. There is more to it even than that. It's the connection you have with your higher self. And that is not something that is hooked to your intelligence or really your consciousness. It is apart from all of those things. It's the soul connection. That's what you came here to learn, isn't it? Dear Cryon, how can I get connected better? And the answer has always been the same. Relax, 
let it go, let it flow, and the answers will come gradually as you need them. There is no pressure to do something. Even if you get a strong intuition, that's what you're to do. That's just the first part, the identification. That may even shift and change from those around you. Learning this is also very, very difficult. Because when a human being gets kind of instructions from spirit, I am supposed to do this, that locks in. And that's all that you're supposed to do. And then later, if you get a message that is, that is beyond that, you'll say, well, no, I'm going with the first one. Thank you. Not understanding that these things can shift. They can be more grand. They can go another direction. Even before you started the first one, are you afraid of this change? Most human beings want a signpost, want a clock. They want a map. And then they'll proceed. That's the linear human. Spirit is anything but linear. Spirit has a grand love for you and is willing to give you the intuition to prepare for it, but not to tell you when. And this bothers some humans because it is contrary to how you grew up with authority. But how about how you grow up with partners? You discuss, don't you? You can change things, can't you? It's time you understood that partnering with spirit is really what you're doing. And that means you can relax with these kinds of things. There are books to be written in this room that you haven't started yet. There are covert healers in the room that know you can do it. But you just haven't stepped out yet. There are projects to be started again that didn't work before the shift. And you have to make up your mind, you have the courage to try it again. And we say to you, dear ones, that all of these things are intuitive. And you're sitting there nodding and knowing, I know who you are. I know what's taking place. There are those in here right now who have come with issues and problems. They've told no one about. How would you like to start a process of reframing those so they go away? So they're solved. And you would say, yes, 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 this is what I came for. Will you accept that? Yes, this is what I came for. Will you accept a timing that is not your own? Uh, maybe. <laughs> From the other side of the veil comes a magic for you of love beyond measure. If I could shout this in the room so you could hear it better, I'd do it. God does not think like a human. God does not think, period. God is not a personality like you are. God is not in an individual like you are. God does not have a face like you think. God is the great central creator of all things that exist. And primarily the emotion of love and benevolence, grandeur and compassion describe God. There is nothing else. There is no dissension in the ranks on the other side of the veil. That is human thought human structure, human dysfunction, and it's never put upon God. I want to give you some examples of how limiting human consciousness is at this moment. To show you how beautiful intuition is, because it goes past all of this. If you could just sit and listen to that which God speaks to you about in the cracks between thinking in the moments between waking and sleep that's when intuition is the best that's when you know you have angels that's when you know you're loved by God think for a moment 
You're at a table. You're trying to figure something out. On the table is spread financial information. You are paying bills. <laughs> you are working a puzzle. You're trying to compute. You're trying to do something either at home or at work. And up comes a child. It's a child that knows who you are. The child comes up, perhaps behind you, sees what you're doing. Now stop the picture. What's the child there for? Is the child there to help you with your computations? Is the child there to say, well, you got this one wrong and right. You ought to categorize this a bit differently. And the answer is, of course not. Because the consciousness of the child has their own complete world of what pleases them and what doesn't please them, what they think is joyful or not, what is happening around them. They have no concept that you're even busy. Their world revolves around you. And they come up perhaps and pull on your sleeve. And what do you do? You turn around and you often smile. You may take them by the hand. You may, you may hold them to show them something that does compute love. That particular thing is what goes between the veil of a small consciousness and a higher one. Do you see where I'm going with this? So the emotion of compassion and love, the smiling, is all the child wanted and it's instant. They know, you know, and the barrier is dropped. They don't have to help you with your finances. Think of a great painter. <clears throat> Let's say it's Picasso. In the middle of painting something profound. It is absolutely priceless someday. And up comes the child <laughs> with the crayon wanting to help a little bit. The child has no consciousness at all of the creative genius that is going on right before the child's eyes. The crying, the crying message has always been this way, is that low consciousness cannot look up. A fool does not know they're a fool. The child has their, their crayon ready to go, ready to help with the painting. <laughs> And the master will see this and see it coming and chuckle and laugh, knowing that the child's world does not have any idea what's really going on. But they sense the love, the approval or the disapproval. It's all in the emotion that goes over the veil of high and low consciousness. You might have a, a very intelligent animal who lives with you. There are some animals and birds that have, they say, the intelligence, not the intellect, the intelligence of a three to four year old child. And the animal may come up wagging its tail behind you while you're working on those computations. Is the animal about to help you with your addition? No. But the animal in their intelligence, in their wisdom, in their happiness, is looking for your approval, is looking for a pat on the head, perhaps to hold them for a moment. They're smart enough to know this is good. They're smart enough to be satisfied with that. Dear ones, I do not want to criticize humanity. I want to tell you that everything I just gave you is the example of you and God. You put upon God what you think is God, and it's you. God may be involved in the creation of a universe somewhere, and you are sitting here worrying if you're wearing the right thing to please God. The consciousness you have has no idea who God is. And yet, 
there is something you have in common. That is, you can feel as you approach that which is the great creation, you can feel the love that's for you. As God takes you in God's arms and holds you and say, it's okay, it's all right. Not just okay, but you belong here. And you feel the love pouring into you. You don't have to help God create the universe or paint the master picture because you can't. There are intellectuals who will argue with this and they will say the human brain can imagine anything, can be intellectual to the stars, there's no limit. They just don't know where the ceiling is and believe me it's very very close. Meaning the consciousness doesn't even know its limitations. You don't know what isn't there. You can't know what you don't know. And so we say the way around this is intuition because it, it has no bounds of intellectualism. The intuition you have today or when you're older is the same. And it's that voice literally that comes from the creative source that is multidimensional so it's confusing that has no time so it's confusing that may change so it's confusing but with it is always that which is the love that accompanies that which is the creative source I am on the other side of the veil as I speak to you now I know who is here I know the issues that came in I know what you're planning on doing when you leave because you expose that to the Creator I also know the boxes that are here the disbelief that is here I also know the belief that is here and who is actually listening and feeling right now the love of God in the chair that wants to hug you and say all that you are concerned and worried about is so small compared to really who you are that your magnificence is what God sees does the phrase made in his image mean anything it could have been made in her image you see humans are the ones who have to have gender <clears throat> God has no gender you were made in the image of God what does this mean to you does it mean you look like God when you when you appear in the mirror or is there more to that phrase think about it what if it meant that the image of the Creator is inside you in some way imaged that means that the love of God is in you ready to shake hands to partner with the planet with the stars wiping away all manner of worry and health issues but the main one is that you're supposed to live longer you haven't figured it out yet you worry yourself into the grave you haven't figured it out that if you start to then connect with spirit early in life you're going to live a very long time it's called you think that's what you've said it's actually the other way around you are meant to live hundreds of years your body is built for that it regenerates but you haven't been able to let it regenerate perfectly or even well because of all of the consciousness that you put upon that which is your body even that which you put upon God in other words consciousness is the key to long life joy will extend your life dramatically that which is smile and benevolence will extend your life dramatically without aging without disease the more joyful and loving and compassionate you can be in everyday life disease will run from you it cannot attach to you consciousness is king and intuition that's a highway that's a highway to know where to be 
and also to know where you are. Dear ones, this is the meaning of life. To be here in a place where you're balanced and happy. Where joy is yours. Because God is a joyful God. That's what love does. So the next time you hear about all the dysfunctions in heaven. Or those who disagreed and were cast out. And became those who will then burn you someday. I want you to identify all of that. That is humans. Not God. Never God. It's almost like children decided to paint a picture of God and they painted themselves. That's what it is. Oh, the magnificence of the love of God for you is beyond your imagination. There's a hand outstretched to you right now that says in this energy, in this shift, in these times, it's time to take that hand. And clean up that which is not appropriate to your magnificence. To get rid of the thoughts, the fears, the worries, the anxieties, the disease. That is so human, so linear. And that shouldn't even be there. And it's possible right now to begin the process. And you'll see it daily. You'll start to improve. Those who have been to these meetings, whether it's been to the Stargate or Cryon, know that there is something that goes on quite often. You leave differently than you came. You drop your allergies. You drop your fears. Some have walked out total, complete remission of disease. And there's no one in here selling bottles of medicine. It's all in the consciousness of the human being. What's the next step for you? Do you believe it? Is it a nice thought? Or it is the next life step? That's the free choice that every single human being has. Every single time I channel. I want you to think about this. I want you to be open more to intuition. I'm giving you instructions that say... We're here. Where are you? We've always been here. But in this shift, we're here in a greater number. More benevolent. Ready to help. But there's walls around you. What you've been told is real or not. Can you drop that? And, and find another reality that is beyond what you were told. That's bigger than you were told. And smile all the way. You're a light worker. The work is that which is being here in a three-dimensional planet with those around you doing what they're doing. But you are in control of you. And that can change. This is the message of Cryon that will be taken all over the planet. And there will be those who will walk out and laugh and roll their eyes. And the other ones next to them will go out with the healing of a major disease. That, my dear ones, is free choice. And the power of the human being to control their own lives in this time. Never, ever on this planet has there been an energy like today ever take it see if it matches that which I said is possible don't overcomplicate it accept that which flows freely to you now in these moments we have together you feel that do you feel the entourage here? Do you feel the love here that presses upon you and says, I know who you are? And so it is.